Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining me on the Slice of Healthcare podcast. I'm your host, Jared Taylor. If you're watching, many of you will notice I no longer have my beard. I had a beard for a while, uh, so I do not have that now. I'm really excited to uh, to have our guest on, the, the Chief Medical Officer of Notable Health, Dr. Muthu uh, Alagapin. I got it right, right? Boom. Alagapin, yeah. It's great to be on. Thank you, Jared. I'm excited, uh, excited to have you on here. Um, did you grow the beard or did you have the beard ahead of time to put me to shame? <laughs> I did not grow it for this podcast. I, I had it before and uh, will likely keep it for the near term. Love it. <laughs> really, really uh, excited to have you on here today. Let's dive right into it. Please tell us about your background and then we'll, we'll talk more about Notable Health. Yeah, so I mean, I'm a big believer in in being influenced by the people you're around and the places you, you sort of live in. And so I grew up in Houston, which um, is home to the world's largest medical center, uh, the, the Texas Medical Center. My, my dad is a physician, and so I grew up at an early age, just influenced by medicine and healthcare and what it meant to be there for people uh, during those really difficult health crises. Uh, so I was sort of inspired by the, the career of a physician at a very early age. Moved out to the Bay Area for college at Stanford, and you know that area has a totally different energy and focus to it around technology and engineering and solving problems uh, through tech. And uh, so, got inspired by that. Um, and so, for me, sort of the ideal career was one where I could learn a lot about healthcare problems, and then also have a skill set around how to solve those problems. And I've always believed in the power of. Uh, you know, small teams and technology as a really powerful change agent. And so for me, that that's sort of how I've ended up where I am, which is, um, you know, I love healthcare. I'm a physician, spent, you know, many, many years within medical centers learning how that system works uh, and learning how to treat patients, but also spent a lot of time in the Bay Area in Boston around some of the greatest technology minds and have tried to combine those two influences uh, in the role I'm in now. And, and talk us through, you know, Notable Health today, um, you know, core focus, uh, what's new, what's happening with the company. Um, a lot of people are already familiar with Notable Health, but let's assume that there's a part of the audience that isn't. Uh, kind of give us that, that broad overview. Yeah, well, uh, no, it's, it's exciting to hear that more people have heard of the work we were doing and the impact we've had. Uh, so Notable Health is an intelligent automation platform for healthcare. Uh, the core belief is that there is probably a trillion dollars a year in administrative waste in the U.S. healthcare system, people performing manual workflows in an error-prone way uh, that is sort of just eating up uh, uh, you know, the fabric of healthcare systems. And the premise of Notable is let's create a platform that can train digital assistants to automate these workflows uh, in a way that's actually more accurate, more performant than even humans can do. And so to date, we automate hundreds of workflows for some of the biggest healthcare systems in the country. Uh, we're, we're doing close to a million automations a day, and we automate everything from prior authorizations to patient intake, care gap outreach, uh, referral scheduling, and so much more. And so uh, multi-use, multi, multi-purpose uh, intelligent automation platform and I, I, I will probably get to this just given the, the, the focus in the industry, but we sort of take the best in AI and intelligence capabilities. We combine that with the best in automation integration capabilities uh, to create these digital assistants that are uh, you know, extremely effective and, and have helped uh, create a lot of value for our partners. Let's talk about automation in uh, large hospital systems. You know, how, does, how does that look currently today? And then, and then obviously take it back to Notable Health and how Notable Health is helping some of these large health systems. Yeah. So, I mean, we've known for a long time in healthcare that there is this kind of growing labor crisis across probably every role. Like we, we have an increasing demand for healthcare services with an aging population. We have a shrinking or at best stagnant supply of healthcare providers. We're probably going to have a, a nurse shortage of a million nurses by 2030, probably a quarter million physicians by, by that same year. And so this is sort of an existential crisis for healthcare systems is, is our belief, and I think many in the industry. And so we strongly believe that, you know, automation will be inevitable as sort of a key 
lever that healthcare systems will use to run their operations over the next few years, right? Um, there is certainly a future in which as a healthcare system, you will need to rely heavily on automation across many different areas and workflows in order to continue to sort of deliver care at a, uh, in a reasonable way. And so we're really excited and have a lot of conviction to, to what that future is going to look like. Uh, at our healthcare systems, especially in the last two years, we're finding that systems are, are having a harder and harder time recruiting the staff and retaining the staff that are performing many of these frontline workflows, whether that's checking in a patient, collecting a payment, processing a, a faxed in referral, or any of the other sort of uh, manual workflows that healthcare systems face today. And so when we work with systems, it's often under that premise of you've got tons of manual workflows. You can't hire enough people to sort of fill the roles that you have open. Um, and the people you do have are either burned out or sometimes they're performing these workflows and committing errors along the way, right? Choosing the wrong insurance plan leads to a denial, which leads to three months of rework and a lot of administrative overhead on both sides. Or you know, they're reading through hundreds of clinical documents to figure out, is that patient actually due for a mammogram or not? You know, you've got to read through quite a bit of the chart to go find the appropriate imaging documents to make sense of that. And so with Notable, we think this is a great problem for machines to solve. Uh, you know, as computing and algorithms and, and techniques have gotten more sophisticated, we're realizing that machines are just better than humans at performing more and more tasks, right? And so it started off maybe with arithmetic, you know, 40 years ago as sort of what machines are better at. And as we've progressed, you know, it turns out they're actually better at generating text. They're better at interpreting images. They're better at converting images to text and, and, and many more things. And so we think critically about that. What are machines better at? What should we use them, uh, how should we use them to augment the work we're doing? And so we'll often uh, help, uh, help you know, automate tons of these workflows on behalf of the systems we work with. And, you know, let's, let's I guess we're not switching focus. We're, we're just continuing on in a way. Um, let's talk a little bit about uh, like ChatGPT and large language models, right? How they're helping uh, to detect things like diagnosis. Like, a specific diagnosis, right? Uh, lapse insurance claims, et cetera. Like there's a lot of stuff uh, that they can help with. You have to go pretty far today to find someone, just anyone that doesn't know what ChatGPT is, right? Or uh, hasn't uh, at least researched AI a little bit. But talk us through how GPT and these large uh, language models, like specifically how they're continuing to help um, I know this has been a core focus for for you and your team, as you were mentioning for for a while now. Um, but when you look at the, you know, just the, across the whole patient population, what are the core areas that this type of technology can truly continue to help? Yeah. So w when we think about automation, you know, I often define it as knowing what to do and knowing how to do it. And so the what to do is the intelligence. The how to do it is sort of the ability to integrate and sort of take an action based on knowing what to do. And so even if you take a simple automation, like maybe you have a an Alexa at home and it turns off the lights at 9 p.m. every day, that's because you've deterministically told it at 9 p.m., do this. That's the knowing what to do. And knowing how to do it is you've set up some sort of connection to the lights in your house. And so that's a very simplistic example, but shows you how those two sort of uh, aspects come together. So in healthcare, when we think about automation, the knowing what to do often is a big challenge. And you can approach that deterministically. So you can set up a rule that says, you know, every time a patient has an A1C over this number, they are likely to have this diagnosis. And that's great. Those deterministic rules work pretty well. Where GPT and large language models have helped us tremendously is in setting up automations that are not quite as deterministic, but are much more complex in nature. And so perhaps we need to review an entire imaging report from a CT scan to detect if this patient has a polyp in their lung that could be concerning for cancer. Now that requires you know, a more advanced semantic understanding, a more advanced clinical understanding. It's not as easy as setting up a rule. And so uh, that's where GPT and large language models have been really instrumental for us. And so as you mentioned, we've been you know, uh, leveraging these for quite some time. Uh, you know, um, 
And we're using them in lots and lots of use cases because so much of automation, again, is predicated on the intelligence on knowing what to do. And so examples of, of that are everything from uh, helping answer clinical questions in a prior authorization or for a clinical registry sort of record uh, to reading through referrals and insurance cards to extract entities, like knowing what the subscriber ID is versus the group number or knowing in the referral, what's the reason for visit? Who's the referring provider? These things sound rather trivial, but you know it's actually quite complex and large language models are really good at that medical entity extraction. Uh, and then we use them to, to uh, essentially read through the entire patient's record before upcoming visits. Uh, in what we call patient AI, which is essentially thought experiment here, what if you could offer a concierge care assistant to every patient in the world, right, without them having to pay for it? Well, to do that, you would need this digital concierge to know everything about that patient and then to personalize an experience of that patient based on exactly who that patient is, right? So, you know, if they're likely to prefer this clinic over that one, or if they prefer Uber over Lyft, or they prefer to pay their copay at this time of the day, we can use the medical record and large language models to basically understand that patient and deliver a concierge-like experience during intake, registration, scheduling, any other part of care. And so those are some ways in which we've been, we've been leveraging it, but sort of going back to the high level, uh, with automation being knowing what to do and how to do it, it's the knowing what to do that large language models allows us to sort of elevate to a new level. What's, there's probably a lot, right? And there's only some stuff I know that you can share. What's next with Notable Health that really excites you that you can share with us here today? Um, like I said, I know there's, there's a lot and there's always stuff that you can't share, but let's go into what you can. Right. So we'll be, we'll be announcing some of these uh, new partnerships and updates over the next few months. And so we'll be able to talk a lot more about some of this. But, you know, at the core, it's, it's kind of what I was just getting at is we're excited about finally delivering a concierge care like hyper personalized experience for every patient before and after every visit where healthcare is such a personal experience that people go through, yet the digital experience of healthcare is very impersonal in most cases, right? You feel like your health system has all this data about you, yet they don't really know you the way they should, uh, despite almost knowing everything important and personal about your life, you know, the medications you're on, you know, when you've gotten sick, who your insurance company employer is, et cetera. And so we want to flip that on its head and we want healthcare to be the most personal experience, uh, the most concierge care like experience out there. And we were uh, actually at HIMSS recently talking about this on a panel, but so often in healthcare, people look to the airline industry as sort of the gold standard, right? What if healthcare check-in felt like checking into a flight? And again, we think we can do so much better, right? We think there's a world in which the airline industry actually looks to healthcare and says, hey, how do we make our check-in experience way more personal the way healthcare is? And, and so that's the type of future we're trying to enable. One in which you know, we're able to be proactive and predictive about healthcare needs, healthcare preferences, and stay one step ahead of the patient, given that we have this entire corpus of data in the medical record about patients that we can tap into. I'd say, you know, like you were saying, we, we look to the airline industry and in a lot of industries, right? Not just healthcare is kind of the gold standard for the, the workflow to, to book and, you know, schedule your flights, at least um, after in healthcare, right? If you have an appointment or something, when you show up, it's not delayed by a couple of hours or uh, luckily we're not, we're not at that point, right? Um, usually it's, it's a couple minutes or, um, but yeah, that's, that's a really good, good way of looking at it. Well, it sounds like you have some really exciting things that are continuing to come up, uh, and hopefully we can we can stay in touch and have you come back on to kind of dive more into some of these as they become uh, you know publicly available. But I want to thank you a, a ton for coming on the show today, talking through automation, uh, giving your thoughts on uh, you know GPT and large language models, and uh, also sharing some updates with us. Yeah, thank you for having me on, uh, Jared. This was a lot of fun.